Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna go thrifting together as usual, and then I'm gonna take you outside in my yard and do a garden tour of the garden renovation I've been doing. So if you have been with me for a while, you remember I had a large, large cherry tree in my front yard that had to come down. This thing was massive, and it left this gaping hole in my front yard. So that turned into a garden, which spilled over into the back backyard it's a whole thing so today I'm gonna to bring you outside after thrifting and we're gonna take a look at what is going on in my yard so we are starting down the green aisle I wasn't quite sure if I'd wind up at Shillington Goodwill this morning but here I am <laughs> searching down the green aisle and right away the shelves look pretty full, so I'm excited. I try not to go too quickly, but when the shelves are full, it makes it very exciting and I wanna get all the treasure. Okay, right out of the gate, I find this Swack Linda Corneal dish. This is the Aunt Gertie style. I do like finding the sugar and creamer and the different figures. The plates really don't bring too much money. I think this is an appetizer plate or platter. And at $4, I feel like I could probably only get maybe $16 for it. So I do leave that behind, but those are super cute and I always pick up the sugar and creamer. I'm kind of sorry I left this turkey behind. I liked his coloring, it seemed very vintage and he was a little planter. I don't know how many people would want a turkey planter, so I leave him behind also. Here's a little figurine that looks like Hummel, pretending to be Hummel. You can always spot a fake by the way it's so poorly painted. The real Hummels are painted really well. This fun mug caught my attention. I love a good hula girl mug. First I thought it was Disney, but it is ABC store. And I am being a really good girl by not picking up single mugs unless they are high profit. Barrel of Monkeys. I had Barrel of Monkeys when I was young. So much fun, one of my favorite games. This one's contemporary, I'm pretty sure. I think the original ones came in the colored barrels. You either got red or blue. This was a pressed metal planter and I liked the design very much, but I was hoping it was ceramic. Just some green glassware. I do leave these behind also. So now I'm looking at these green little cups. First I thought they were a custard cup, but then I realized they did have a handle. Put those back. What else do we see? Here was a little Holy Family nativity scene in a teardrop hanging glass. Kind of interesting. And now we're going down the brown aisle. I was looking for a signature on this little votive holder. It was a dolphin, kind of looked like recycled glass, but I don't know that it was anything that special. Okay, this lamp, can I say that I could not figure out if this lamp was good or not good? I'm thinking not good, and it did have a broken piece of rattan. I don't know that I would have picked that up unless it was really high profit. Lots of souvenir little pieces on the shelves. I think photos are probably the best souvenir of any trip I've ever taken. I'm not really one to pick up a lot of tchotchke when I go on vacation. I think it seems like a good idea at the time and then you get it home and say, what am I gonna do with this thing? Okay, this glass vase, kind of pretty. I'm seeing a lot of this in the stores. I don't know where that comes from, but I always take a look at it. The round globe shape is very appealing, but I don't know that was anything of note. A vintage planter. I love when I find pottery and it has a good signature. Okay, this is some lusterware. It is a creamer and a sugar. They don't match. And then the tops look totally odd. I think somebody replaced the tops. So I leave those behind. I don't pick up a lot of the lusterware anyway. I find it doesn't bring much profit. This little birdhouse was adorable. Driftwood Divas. 
Good job, Driftwood Divas. I thought that was really sweet, but I kind of don't know what you would do with that. I don't think a real bird would fit in it, unless it was one of those tiny, tiny hummingbirds that almost look like a bee, but I do leave that for someone else also. I spot a pair of L.L. Bean duck shoes on the hard goods aisle. I noticed there's quite a few problems with this. The stitching has coming loose and the inner pads have quite a bit of wear. So I do leave those. This whole aisle is like a Jenga aisle, so funny. Okay, this is an Inca mask, I'm gonna call it. And I have slowed down on picking up masks, although I did recently sell a couple of the Indonesian ones, the Bali ones, and they did very well. So when they're highly decorative and painted, I pick them up. Here is a lamp that I am desperately trying to figure out what is going on here. I was kind of hoping that this was better made. I'm not sure what store this would have come from. And here I'm trying to get the shade back on. The harp of the lamp is missing. So I decide to just put it to the side so that doesn't fall and break. I did like the pattern on the lamp and it had like a rough texture to it, kind of like sandblasted. Looking at the bottom, it's just a molded piece, not very high quality. Next, my eye spots these pictures. See how white the frame is? That's a sure telltale sign that this is modern and not a true vintage piece, and they all are the same painting. So I do put those back, but truth be told, I kind of liked those. I think I might have picked those up if the pictures were different, if it was three different scenes. 99% of the time I don't pick up decorative plates, but 99% of the time I do look at them. I'm not quite sure what the fascination is. This little piece I've looked at before. Here is a worker. His name is Earl. He is a sweetheart. We always say good morning and chat it up. We are not allowed to touch what is in these bins but Earl is always great in letting me take a peek of what's coming out on the shelves. He is a super hard worker. Okay, some pigs. I was looking at pigs. I think that has either something to do with watering a pot, you soak the pigs, or I could have just made that up and it's a top to something. Okay, here's a doll trying to get off the top shelf. <laughs> I don't know who buys these or what these are used for. Paper mache, kind of like a form of paper mache. Very interesting, but not quite sure who would decorate their homes with those pieces. And we are on to the blue aisle. This soup mug had kind of a pretty design, although I don't know that I would have picked those up. Too heavy, not a lot of profit there. I was kind of attracted to these egg cups. I think that's what these are. I dream of having a life where I can sit down to breakfast and have my eggs served in little decorative cups. <laughs> Truth be told, I'm usually grabbing a yogurt and on the run. Okay, so I'm gonna move this soap dispenser out of the way to take a look at this glass candlestick. At this point, I still need to have most glass have signatures, but I am learning. Here, made in China, these two, I think these were just votive candle holders. Very heavy though, and very pretty. So I'm not quite sure where those were sold. If there would have been four of one color, I would have spent more time researching that. This is just a little sweet vase with like a children's design on it. I don't know how many children are receiving flowers that they would need a vase in their room, but okay. A wax candle, southwestern design. What else do we see? As you can tell, we are moving at a clip today. This teapot, this design is reminding me of something. I feel like I've seen this design on maybe Dansk or a Swedish-Norwegian dish company. 
And here I am trying to gently pull off the sticker and keeping the barcode intact so that they can scan it if I do buy it. And that is not what I wanted to do by pulling that whole sticker off. So we can see it's made in Japan and I do wind up running comps on this. The comps turn out not to be good, but leave a comment down below if you know of the brand that I'm thinking about that does bring good money with a similar design. It's a tulips design, I think. This piece had damage and that is the oddest bookend I think I've ever seen. So I do grab this teapot to do further research. I wanted to show you that to show you that I don't always know right off the bat whether I'm going to buy something. I wind up not buying that teapot, but see, even after all of these years, I'm constantly going back and forth. Like with that butterfly plate, I might have thought differently and picked that up. Little coaster set. I thought those were pretty but you can see the original price, 69 cents. Maybe that was per coaster. Just a little squirrel figurine. And this poor sweet lady has lost her hand. Lots of handmade pottery, student pottery, art pottery. The end caps, it's very rare that I find good items on the end caps. I think they are the most uh, shopped, I'm gonna call it. I was hoping that these were the Russian nesting dolls, but it was just one solid piece. All right, let's go down the purple aisle. Lots of lamps like this. I think this might be the 90s, kind of like an Asian design. Okay, so right away this little lamb catches my attention. I have sold these before. This is Italy. Depose, I think, is the type or the branding sometimes. And I do put him back because I think he's the only one. And then I realize right by him is a whole bag of, I'm going to call these nativity animals. I don't know that these are always for nativity. I do grab him. And I have sold a few sets like this and done quite well. It's always better when you have the full set. So here we're gonna take a look at them in a minute. I'm gonna open the bag so that we can see what I have, but I wanna finish scanning the aisle first. Try to stay a little organized in my brain to know where I've left off. Okay, so here I'm just gonna take a quick look to see what's in the bag. I think I've seen that this bag was priorly open, which tells me somebody else already looked through them. I don't know why they would take them unless there's a problem with them. Okay, so we have a camel. I believe it's marked Italy. A little bit of paint wear, but so far so good. And the next piece out, a sitting camel. Again, Depose, Italy. The Depose, I think, is D-E-P-O-S-E. -E. Could be Depose, maybe in Italian. Okay, so this is the first piece I'm noticing has damage. There is the Italy mark. It's got some broken antlers, but still not too bad yet. And then as I begin to pull the animals out, I notice that a lot of the limbs are broken off. There is one with a broken foot. And then as I peek in the bag, I see that quite a few of them are broken. Back in the bag they go. What a shame. I would have picked these up. Here I'm just checking on some rocks. These are <laughs> engraved rocks. Pretty sure they're made out of plastic. Maybe for hide a key. I'm not quite sure what those are used for. Okay, well, I don't look at a lot of teacups. These captured my interest. This is Minton with the laurel leaf stamp, and I think they're called Jasmine. Minton cups and china can bring very good money. I know the china from the 1800s, the Majolica, 
You really have to know your marks though. I'll insert a few photos here for you. How cute is this cup? Just adorable. If there would have been two or even better four, I would have grabbed those. So sweet. Okay, what else do we see? This little jug pitcher. Pieces like this are really well done, but I, I want a couple of pieces. I don't want a lot of single pieces, unless of course they're really something wonderful. I especially liked this swing arm lamp. Now, while I recognized it was modern, I really like this design. Looking under the shade, you can see how inexpensively made this is. So I don't think this is even Ikea. I think this might be Target or something like that. If I needed a lamp like that, I would have grabbed that if it worked. As you can see, I still have the teapot in my cart, but I do put that back. Just a piece of Lennox. Lots of Lennox in the thrift stores. If Lennox ever becomes a thing again, we'll all be rich. Okay, scooting down the orange aisle, and as you can see, I have quite a bit of clothing in my cart, because while you guys weren't looking, I scooted over to clothing. I will try to do another clothing haul, because I've been finding some really good pieces, so I will make note of that to myself. A little planter made in Japan, A made in Japan just means that the item is vintage, doesn't necessarily mean that we should pick them up. This plate was pretty. Yep, Pier 1 Imports. I kind of guessed that their items really have a distinctive look to them. These glass globes filled with yellowing water Yikes. <laughs> that looks like an accident just waiting to happen. And magically, we're back on the brown aisle. Roger and I had checked out and went and got some lunch, and now we're back. We had the most delicious pulled pork platters. Ah, they were so good. So if you see, my cart is empty. I paid for everything, and it is in my trunk. Here is just a wood piece. I didn't care for the wood grain on that. And next I spot this vase. It did have a drip on it and I wound up taking out a little handy wipe out of my handbag and trying to see if that was after it was fired. Unfortunately, that drip mark was in the firing, so I do put that piece back. But boy, that was pretty. I would have picked up that vase. Okay, I'm realizing as I'm watching this video, I missed a little bird bucket. See it there? I wanted to look at that. It's very hard to watch your videos back and realize after the fact what you missed. So when I leave for lunch and come back, naturally the employees are just constantly putting out new inventory. So I'm trying to always scan the shelves to see what I have missed or you know what is new on the shelf. So a lot of this I realize I have seen before, but I'm just doing a quick once over to see if my eye can spot the new items. Very fun, very fun way to shop. Now I'm gonna switch over to the yellow, the yellow aisle. I think I did this already, but I'm noticing this tray with a tile pattern. This piece was very, very heavy. Pretty contemporary, but that would have been quite the shipping cost, so I didn't feel that it was really, you know, worth picking up, that the buyer would have to pay such high shipping for.
a little spoon rest, and underneath it, a platter that I did like. I liked this piece, just a man rowing his boat, and design pack, so nothing of note. I do put that one back. I have sold these metal trivets. I think this is the 80s. So what type of flower is that? Is that a calla lily? <laughs> I should know this. Here in the green aisle, I spot the first piece that is new inventory that has come out while I was at lunch. This is Mulligan, Longa Burger. Mulligan, I think is the dog's name, a dog dish. So that is a great find. And here, as I look up, I can't believe my eyes, the most beautiful blue margarita glasses just sitting on the shelf waiting for me. Look at these, hand-blown, probably made in Mexico. I'm guessing a little bit older, $2.99. And as you can see, there are only three, but boy, do I grab these quick. I am just so excited for finding these. I am just praying there are no chips or cracks. What'd you find, sweetie? I want a fourth one of these. These are so good. Right after putting the third margarita glass in my cart, I spot this beautiful handmade cross. I'm not quite sure if somebody used a can lid and then attached a brooch, but boy, is this beautifully done. This is a no-brainer. goes right in my cart. Meanwhile, I have shared with Roger that I am just hoping to find a fourth margarita glass and without me knowing, he goes into looking for it diligently. This is why I love this man. <laughs> so now I am distracted by all of the other items on the shelf. I find these little cups. Not quite sure what they're for, but they look very interesting. Yep, I'm gonna put these in my cart. And Roger is already, without me knowing, on the next aisle, looking for a fourth margarita glass for me. The best boyfriend ever. Best boyfriend ever award. <gasps> oh, stand back and smile for me. <laughs> oh, oh. Is it the same or not? Is oh, it's same? exactly the same. Oh, you're the best. What are the chances of that? Oh, don't break. Okay, my day is complete. I can go home now. I can't believe you found that fourth one. I'm so happy. Here's just a little brief update of what's going on with the garden project in the front of the house. So most of you who have been with my channel for a while remember that I've taken down a very large diseased cherry tree that was here when I bought the house. I've now been in the house about seven years and completing projects little by little. So this has all become a garden bed. This is my favorite, favorite tree in the yard now. This is Hinoki Cypress Cripsy, just beautiful. It should grow to about 15 feet tall, so that will just be spectacular. Over to the right, oh, there's our little frog from Goodwill. He's just the guardian of the garden. I put these roses in. These are a knockout rose. I think this might be called popcorn. I could be making that up. These two are doing really well, and I transplanted the third, and then we had a big frost hit. So I might have lost that all together. It's trying. So I'm going to keep it there to see if it comes back. It was the third one of these, and I had it on the other side. It was just too crowded. All right, so the Sedum Autumn Joy is new. This one's been sat on by a rabbit. <laughs> Pesky rabbits. And I've put grasses in over here. These are the Carl Forrester. Hydrangeas, I think, are Nico blue. So the whole garden will be blue, purple, and yellow. Birds are just chirping away this morning. So that is what everything is looking like. 
these three round globe bushes, very uneventful, and the two to the side used to be against the house. I'll try to insert a picture. And I didn't like the way that was looking. Hopefully the house will get painted this fall. So I wanted to move the bushes away from the house. And then I realized I needed a conical tree. So this little guy here is new. I put him in and also that one over there. These should get almost probably about a foot or two from the white trim of the house. So the house is built in 1950. And if you guys remember, I bought this house to sell eBay out of, which that plan is working out just wonderful. I'm really enjoying that. Salvia has come in here. I also have Salvia over there. So if you guys remember also, this was all Pachysandra and it was just filled with weeds. It was so much maintenance. So I decided to take it out and this is the project up to here. <laughs> There's a wayward golf ball. <laughs> um, and the thought is to make some sort of seating area here. I just put the stones there because we're already sitting here. My girlfriend Patty comes over, Roger comes over. Right now it's filthy from all of the digging and plants will come in this area. So I'm gonna stand back so you can get a look the way this looks. We took down a very large rhododendron tree. Lisa took it down. Many of you know my daughter Lisa has a landscape business and she is just wonderful to fit me in as one of her clients. So she took down that large bush and we also had a little scrappy boxwood or something underneath that window. It has left this wall quite blank here and I'm not quite sure what to do about that, but just a simple seating area. I'm not gonna put a lot of money into it because hopefully, eventually, I'll make a fire pit and more of a seating area in the back. So that is what everything is looking like. You can see the weeds and pack of sand just still left on this side. All of this will come out. To dig this out is just a horrendous amount of work. So if you're thinking of planting Pachysandra, my best advice is know that you're going to want to leave it there forever. I had not put this Pachysandra in. Um, the prior owners did, and it had been here. So this is what it winds up looking like. You can see the Pachysandra is lovely. Here it is here. But then you have all of this business mixed in with it, and it becomes like a catch-all. I don't know. There's a lot of thistle growing, which is a weed. Here is what a pile of the roots that got pulled out look like. So I don't know if this is interesting or not, but you have to pull all of these roots out. That's a small pile. Lisa took away probably truckloads of that to the dump. So all of this will be finished. It'll be cleared like here. And then the garden bed, this garden bed here, will come around and we'll have all plantings here. I'm thinking of doing hostas underneath the tree. Oh, what am I spotting in this tree? <laughs> I think Lisa's water bottle. Let's see. Yep, <laughs> she was working here the other day. So just pick that up. So this is what the side is looking like because we are just collecting piles of stuff and then she carts it away all at once. There's my air conditioner. Uh, this tree might have to go. This is the root and stems of the big rhododendron she took out. And underneath the tarp is, uh, is more of this root business. So much of it, but so much better. So I'm going to give you a shot from what it looks like from the street. And then I'll take you in the backyard to see how that garden is doing. If you guys remember, I had a fence put all around my backyard which was the best decision ever, I love it, and created a garden bed back there. So gardening is a passion, and after a long day of reselling and filming, it's so nice just to throw on a pair of work shoes and some gloves and dig in the dirt. I'm gonna come over to this side. This is just a little garden that was here when I bought the house, but most of the plants have changed. So this type of hosta is very variegated, See this? It's got all different colors. And I will probably put this type of hosta underneath the tree we just cleared. There's some peonies, one of my all-time favorite flowers. I don't know the name of it, but boy, are these pretty. And this is just about to pop. That'll be lovely. There is my metal sun. 
and another hydrangea. I leave the twigs on the hydrangea until the leaves come in and then I cut the twigs off. And somehow that has always worked for me in some grasses. All right, so that is what the garden is looking like. This I might take out. This is a clematis and it gets kind of scrappy looking. It does put a beautiful purple flower. Might be Jackmani. Jackmani, I think we say it. All right, so let's stand back on the road. Make sure there's no cars coming. So this is what the house is looking like. You can see my Ikea bag in the door with packages, my morning sales. And I will try to give you a shot of what the house looked like when I bought it. Again, I am hoping to paint the house. Not quite sure what color yet. I might make all of the stone work either a gray or a white, a quiet white. And then where the white trim is, make that gray. I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence. Leave a comment down below if you know what color I should paint my house. The roof is saying that's new. And um, yeah, really pleased with this. All right, let's go in the backyard. Okay, on the side of the house are these large, large bushes. And I always have to sculpt these. It's a lot of work. Sometimes I hire Lisa to do it. Sometimes I get out ladders and do it myself. Those are my garage windows. And I'm not sure if I'm going to take these out. For now, it's okay. It's just a lot of maintenance. All right, let's go in the backyard. All right, so this is the fence that I put up the year of COVID, right before COVID really hit. And, um, and I had the fence put up. Now, originally the fence was like a real blonde golden color and I loved it. And I was going to preserve that color. But then I found out that you have to do that. You have to do that treatment on the fence every two to three years. And I'm all about low maintenance at this point in life. Because being a YouTube creator and an eBay, you know, seller, so much work and so much time that I think it's better just to let the fence grow gray. All right, let's take a look. I mowed the lawn a couple of days ago. It's going to need to be mowed again. And yep, I have a push mower at this point. I think I need a ride on. I think it's serious. <laughs> I did have a lawn service for a while. He was a young man. Whoop, those birds are chirping. A young man named Ben, and he used to cut my grass. And then Ben finished college and got a real job. So I lost Ben. All right, these are some irises, bearded irises. Just lovely. Now we have a little a little wayward other guy in there, but look how beautiful these are. Oh my gosh, I love a purple flower. Are these not stunning? Gardening and flowers is my passion. It makes me so happy. And you know, after sitting at a computer all day or shopping, you know, at a Goodwill store, it's so nice to come out and dig in the dirt. So I showed you guys putting this garden in, if you remember. Um, I had to reclaim three feet of my property because the neighbor's sheds were on my property and I did get a surveyor out here and he surveyed the land for me and said, yeah, you're supposed to be three feet back. So when I had the fence installed, I gained three feet of my original property, my rightful property, and decided to put this garden bed in. So coming along, a few things are a little crowded, but um, just so pretty. This is a knockout rose. Knockout roses, in my opinion, are lovely. Very little care. A lot of times they have a beautiful scent. And by midsummer, all of this will be crazy overgrown. As you can see, there are some plants that need to be moved. This peony is very crowded. I'm probably going to dig this out, maybe when it finishes blooming, and bring it up front in the front yard. As you can see, ants on it. People think that ants hurt the flowers but they're just after the nectar. I have grown peonies for many years, never had a problem with the ants hurting flowers, and I don't spray them, I just leave them because I think it's, you know, it's just nature. I think this might be a Sarah Bernhardt. That is the cultivar or the, the species. This is a Spirea. I forget what these are called. I know this. I don't know why I always forget the name of that. A little invasive, so I always have to keep an eye on those, but I really like these little purple flowers. Here's another grass. I love grasses for the movement, for the beauty, the grace, and for the ground that they take up with very little maintenance. More roses. Hmm. Just to walk outside and hear the birds chirping. 
So nice, a good break in the day. When you're a reseller, I feel that if you're full time, it can be a real grind and you have to do something to break up the day and get out of that mindset. But um, yeah, this is gonna be coneflower. I've had those in since the beginning, another spirea. Okay, so here is a spirea that I planted way too close to this knockout rose. So I think I'm gonna pull this guy out and see if he can be saved and put him in the front garden bed. I'm gonna need a lot of plants to fill up that garden bed. Another knockout rose. This is Sedum Autumn Joy and they mound and just keep so neat and make beautiful flowers towards fall. This is a big hole where I dug out Stella's and put them in the front yard. So I have to fill in this hole. There are my peonies. I think this is called, what is this called? Something Sunday. And we got hit with a big rain and a lot of wind. So they came down. I'm going to put rings on the peonies. I usually do that. In my old house, I had, oh my gosh, so many peonies and I had to ring them all. Stunning when they bloomed. A lot of work though. You have to clip all of that off. And this is just some simple day lily that were in the house. They were here. So I've left them, they're fairly happy. Once in a while a weed or two pop up, but it, it kind of fills a big space. And the only thing I don't like about them is their orange. Orange is not my thing in the garden. So that is what the garden bed is looking like in the backyard. Eventually I will put in a fire pit. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna put it here this is where I had the mulberry tree cut down that was diseased. If you remember, guys, I talked about taking out the tree that was here and the stump is still there. So somewhere I've got to put a fire pit in. But yeah, so that is what the backyard is looking like. Now, if I paint the house, I'm probably going to take all of these bushes out and just put grass, keep it really simple. Because although the hedges are pretty, these hedges are a ton of work always trimming. They have to be trimmed like four times a year. It's a big job. It really is. And then carting away all of that material. So, okay guys, just figured I'd give you an update. That is the yard update. And I will create another video about this little segment when I get the front finished. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours.